with our circle. Be thou meeting place of love and joy and truth. A shield against all wickedness and evil. A rampart of protection for all those who stand here. Wherefore I do bless thee and consecrate thee by the powerful and potent name of Karnena and Aradia. The room is candle lit and cloudy with incense. On the floor is a circle nine feet in diameter with a candle burning at each of the four cardinal points. Near the northern candle is a small altar bearing the tools and ritual objects of the craft, the sword, the wand, the scourge, the athemi or black-handled knife, the white-handled knife, the red, blue and white cords, the chalice, the pentacle, oil, salt and water. Between the northern and eastern candles and just outside the circle stands the initiate who is waiting to be admitted. She is naked and blindfolded. Inside the circle, the high priest, the high priestess, and the rest of the coven are naked or robed as each individual wishes on this particular night. The high priest takes a sprinkler of water and goes round the circle consecrating it. He takes a lighted candle and goes round the circle with that. Next, the magic sword, with which he describes the whole circle, but leaves a gateway at the northeastern corner through which the initiate will pass. Next, a red and white cord. The red cord binds the initiate's wrists and is put round her neck, pulling her arms up behind her in a triangle. The high priestess stands with the scourge and the wand crossed over her breast while the high priest kneels before her. I invoke thee and call upon thee, O mighty mother of us all, bringer of all fruitfulness. The high priest kisses the high priestess, who then opens her arms out into the five-pointed star position. By seed and root, by bud and stem, by leaf and flower and fruit, by life and love, 
do I invoke thee to descend upon the body of thy servant and priestess. The high priest gives the high priestess the five-fold salute, kissing feet, knees, womb, breasts, and lips. Of the mother darksome and divine, thine the scourge, and thine the kiss, the five-point star of love and of bliss. Here I charge you in this sign. He makes the sign of the five-pointed star with the athemi. All ye assembled in her sight, bow before her spirit bright. Aphrodite, Arian God, lover of the horn of God, mighty queen of witchery and might, Morgan, Etwin, Nicene, Diana, Bridget, Melusine, are you named of all by men, Artemis and Caridwen, Hell's dark mistress, heaven's queen. Ye who would ask of her a room, or who would seek of her a boon, meet her in some secret glade, lead her dancing greenwood shade by the light of the full moon. In a place wild and lone, dance about her altar stone. Work her holy mystery, ye who are fain to sorcery. She brings you secrets yet unknown. And no more shall ye know slavery, who give true worship unto her. Ye who tread her round on Sabbath night, come ye all naked to the rites in token that ye be truly free. She teaches the mysteries of rebirth. Work ye her mysteries in mirth. Heart joined to heart and lip to lip, five are the points of fellowship that bring ye ecstasy on earth. She asks no sacrifice, do but bow, no other law but love she knows, by naught but love may she be known. All that liveth is her own, from her they come, to her they go. Thor Malchus, the Gabra, the Gadula, Leolam, Bagalbi, Lasha, Hashabi, Lamak, Kahi, Ashababi, Karelios, Lamak, Lamak, Bashus, Kabahazi, Sabalios, Lazos, Athami, Kabiolos, Samahak, Et Prameolos. O great god Karnena, return to earth again. Come at my call and show thyself to men. Shepherd of goats upon the wild hills way, lead thy lost flock from darkness unto day. Forgotten are the ways of sleep and night, men seek for them whose eyes have lost the light. Open the door, the door that hath no key, the door of dreams whereby men come to thee. Shepherd of goats, answer unto me. The High Priestess rises and the High Priest prostrates himself before her. Hail the Radia from the Amaltian Hall, pour forth thy store of praise. I lowly bend before thee, I adore thee to the end. With loving sacrifice thy shrine adorn, thy foot is to my lips. My prayer upon the rising incense smoke upborne. Then descend to aid me, for without thee I'm lonely and forlorn. Now the high priest rises and holds the sword with its point to the initiate's heart. O thou who standest on the threshold between the pleasant world of men, and the terrible domains of the dread lords of the outer spaces. Hast thou the courage to make the assay? I have two perfect words, perfect love and perfect trust. For I say verily, 
it were better to rush on this blade and perish than to make the attempt with fear in thy heart. And all who have these passwords are doubly welcome, and I give thee a third to pass thee through the dread door. The high priest kisses the initiate and leads her into the circle. He now takes her to each of the cardinal points of the circle in turn. Dear Lords of the Watchtowers of the East, I do summon, stir and call thee up to witness my rights and to guard the circle. I bring before you Janet, properly pre prepared to be made a priestess and a witch. He makes the sign of the five-pointed star towards the East. Dear Lords of the Watchtowers of the South, I do summon Stir and Collier to witness my rights and to guard the circle. I do bring before you Janet, properly prepared to be made a priestess and a witch. Again, the sign of the five-pointed star. You lords of the watchtowers of the West, I do summon Stir and Collier to witness my rights and to guard the circle. I do bring before you Janet, properly prepared to be made a priestess and a witch. Again the sign. You lords of the watchtowers of the north, I summon you to my circle. Boreas, thou guardian of the northern portals, open the gates that the god and goddess may enter my circle to witness the rites and to guard the circle. I bring before you Janet, properly prepared to be made a priestess and a witch. And the final sign of the five-pointed star towards the north. The high priest kneels, kisses the Athemi, and returns it to the altar. Coven link hands and circle round the initiate standing in the middle of the circle. Feet, neither bond nor free. The high priest binds one of the initiate's ankles. In other religions, the postulant kneels while the priest towers above him. But in the art magical, we are taught to be humble. And so we kneel to welcome them. And we say, Blessed be thy feet. To brought me in these ways. He kisses her right foot and then her left. Blessed be thy knees that shall kneel at the sacred altar. He kisses her right knee and then her left. Blessed be thy womb without which we would not be. He kisses her womb. Blessed be thy breasts formed in beauty. Her right breast and her left breast. 
Blessed be thy lips, such a lot of the sacred names. And finally he kisses her lips. This completes the five-fold salute. Now he binds both her feet together with the cord which was attached to her ankle. Now I'm going to take your measure. And we measure you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. But because you came into our circle with two perfect passwords, perfect love, and perfect trust. And we received you with a further password of a kiss. We return the measure to you and charge you to wear it upon your arm as a signet. In the old days, if you had wanted to escape from the coven, at the same time that your measure was being taken, you would have had hair clippings and nail clippings taken away from your body. And if you had tried to break away from that coven, the witches would have worked with them, and they would have dragged you back to that coven, and you would never have escaped. But you're free to come and go as your conscience dictates. A red thread, which is the measure of the initiate length, is tied round her left arm. sworn into the brotherhood, art thou willing to pass through an ordeal and be purified? I am, and I will. The high priest takes the scourge in his right hand. The initiate kneels, and the high priest gives her three lashes with the scourge. Now seven lashes. And now nine lashes. And he lays the scourge down again at the altar. Ye have bravely passed the test. Art thou ready to swear that thou wilt always be true to the art and be ever ready to protect, help, and defend thy brothers and sisters of the Wicca, even though it should cost thy life? I am and I will. Then say after me, I, Janet. I, Janet. In the presence of the mighty ones. In the presence of the mighty ones. I do of my own free will and accord. I do of my own free will and accord. Most solemnly swear. Most solemnly swear. That I will ever keep secret. That I will ever keep secret. And never reveal the secrets of the art. And never reveal the secrets of the art. Except it be to a proper person. Except it be to a proper person. Properly prepared. Properly prepared. Within a circle. Within a circle. Such as I am now in. Such as I am now in. All this I swear. All this I swear. By my hopes of a future life. By my hopes of a future life. Mindful, mindful that my measure has been taken. That my measure has been taken. And may my weapons turn against me. And may my weapons turn against me. If I break this. If I break this. My most solemn oath. My most solemn oath. Two male members of the coven help the initiate to rise.
consecrate the oil. The high priest consecrates with oil in an inverted triangle on the initiate's body. Now he takes the chalice of wine. I consecrate thee with wine. The same inverted triangle. I consecrate thee with my lips, priestess and witch. With the three kisses in the inverted triangle, the initiate is now a witch. Her blindfold and her cords are removed. And she stands free in the middle of the circle. The servants come forward to assist the priestess. Two male members of the coven come forward to help with the presentation of the tools. I now present to you the working tools of a witch. They are also the magical weapons. First, the magic sword. With this, as with the Athemi, thou canst form all magic circles, dominate, subdue, and punish all rebellious spirits and demons, and even persuade angels and good spirits. With this in your hand, you are the ruler of the circle. Each tool is handed over with a kiss and passed on to one of the assistants with another kiss to be laid on one side. Next, I present the black-hilted Athemi. This is the true witch's weapon and has all the powers of the magic sword. Next, I present the white handled knife. Its use is to form all instruments used in the art. It can only be used inside a magic circle. Next, I present the woman. Its use is call up and control certain angels and genii to whom it would not be meet to use the sword or a thing. Next I present the pentacle. This is for the purpose of calling up the appropriate spirits. The pentacle is an inscribed disc of metal. The appropriate spirits for the initiation ceremony are the god and the goddess. Next, I present the censer of incense. This is used to encourage and welcome good spirits and to banish evil spirits. Next, I present the scourge. This is a sign of power and domination. It is also used to cause purification and enlightenment. For in the book of law, it is written, to learn, you must suffer and be purified. Art thou willing to suffer to learn? I am. Next and lastly, I present the cords. They are of use to bind the sigils of the art and the material basis. Also, they are necessary in the oath. I now salute thee in the name of Karnena and the Raider newly made priestess and witch. The high priest makes the sign of the five-pointed star in front of the new witch with the athemi and kisses her and then lays down the athemi again. Now I must reveal to thee further mysteries. For thou hast come this far. This is the legend of the descent of the goddess into the underworld. The priest representing death puts a veil around the priestess as the goddess. He places his right hand on her head and his left under her knee. I will all my power unto thee. The priest puts on his crown and stands holding his sword point downwards. 
thou hast obeyed the laws well. But mark this, when thou receivest good, so equally art thou bound to return good threefold. Having learned thus far, you must know why the wicker are called the hidden children of the goddess. In ancient times, our Lord, the Horned One, was, as he still is, the Consoler, the Comforter. But men knew him as the Dreadlord of Shadows, lonely, stern, and just. But Our Lady, the Goddess, would solve all mysteries, even the mystery of death, and so she journeyed to the Netherlands. The Guardians of the portals challenged her. Strip off thy garments, lay aside thy jewels, for naught may you bring with you into the salon. And as you were brought into the circle, naked, the goddess laid down her jewels and her garments, and she was bound, as all living must be, who seek to enter the realms of death and the mighty. The priest offers his crown and sword to the priestess. Such was her beauty, that death himself knelt and laid his sword and crown at her feet and kissed her feet, saying, Blessed be thy feet that have brought thee in these ways. Abide with me. But let me place my cold hand upon my heart. And she replied, I love thee not. Why dost thou cause all things that I love, and take delight in to fade and die? Lady, it is age and fate against which I am helpless. Age causes all things to wither. But when men die at the end of time, I give them rest and peace and strength so that they may return. But you, you are lovely. Return not, abide with me. I love thee not. And you receive not my hand on your heart. You must kneel to death's scourge. It is fate better so. And death scourged her tenderly, and she cried, I know the pangs of love. And death raised her and said, Blessed be. And he gave her the fivefold kiss, saying, Thus only may you attain to joy and to knowledge. And he taught her all the mysteries and gave her the necklace, which is the circle of rebirth. And she taught him her mystery of the sacred cup, which is the cauldron of rebirth. They loved and were one. For there be three great mysteries in the life of man. Magic controls them all. For to fulfill love, you must return again at the same time and at the same place as the loved one. And you must meet and know and remember and love them again. But to be reborn, you must die and be made ready for a new body. And to die, you must be born. And without love, you may not be born. And our goddess ever inclineth to love and mirth and happiness, and guardeth and cherisheth her hidden children in life. And in death, she teacheth the way to have communion. And even in this world, she teacheth them the mystery of the magic circle, which is placed between the worlds.
history to erect the ancient altar at which in days past all worship, the great altar of all things. But again, listen to the words of the great mother, who was of old also called among men Artemis, Astarte, Dione, Melusine, Aphrodite, Caridwen, Dana, Arianrod, Bride, Isis, and by many other names. At mine altars, the youth of Lucadum and Sparta made due sacrifice. Whenever ye have need of anything, once in a month and better it be when the moon is full, then shall ye assemble in some secret place and adore the spirit of me, who am queen of all which is. There shall ye assemble, ye who are fain to learn all sorcery, yet have not won its deepest secrets. To these will I teach things that are yet unknown. And ye shall be free from slavery, and as a sign that ye be really free, ye shall be naked in your rights. And ye shall dance, sing, feast, make music and love, all in my praise. For mine is the ecstasy of the spirit, and mine also is joy on earth, for my law is love unto all beings. Keep pure your highest ideal, strive ever towards it, let naught stop you or turn you aside. For mine is the secret door which opens upon the door of you, and mine is the cup of the wine of life and the cauldron of cruidwin, which is the holy grail of immortality. I am the gracious goddess, who gives the gift of joy unto the heart of man. Upon earth I give the knowledge of the spirit eternal, and beyond death I give peace and freedom and reunion with those who have gone before. Nor do I demand sacrifice, for behold, I am the mother of all living, and my love is poured out upon the earth. Hear ye the words of the star goddess, she and the dust of whose feet are the host of heaven, whose body encircles the universe. I, I who am the beauty of the green earth, and the white moon amongst the stars, and the mystery of the waters, and the desire of the heart of man, call unto thy soul, arise and come unto me, for I am the soul of nature, who giveth life to the universe. From me all things proceed, and unto me all things must return and before my face, beloved of gods and men. Thine inmost divine self shall be unfolded in the rapture of the infinite. Let my worship be within the heart that rejoiceth, for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my ritual. And therefore, let there be strength and beauty, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within you. And thou, who thinkest to seek for me, Know thy seeking and yearning shall avail thee not, unless thou know the mystery. But if that which thou seekest, thou findest not within thee, thou wilt never find it without thee. For behold, I have been with thee from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of his hour. For this the great rite, in which a witch qualifies to be a priest, high priest or high priestess, all must be naked. Now the coven all face upwards. Which is to be, who is to be initiated lies in the center of a circle in the five pointed star position. Assist me to build, as the mighty one will, an altar of praise from beginning of days. Thus doth it lie twixt the points of the sky. For this it was placed when the goddess embraced the horned one, her lord who taught her the word which quickened the womb and conquered the tomb. Be thus, as of yore, the shrine we adore. 
the life-giving grail, the feast without fail. Before it are prayer, the miraculous spear, and invoke in this sign the goddess divine. He makes the sign of the five-pointed star above the witch. Thou, who at noon of night doth reign, queen of the starry realms above, not unto thee may we attain, unless thine image be of love. Thy moon rays silver shaft of power, thy green leaf breaking from the bud, by seed that springeth into flower, by life that courses in the blood, by rushing wind and leaping flame, by flowing water and green earth, pour us the wine of our desire from out the cauldron of rebirth. Here may we see in vision clear the secret strange unveiled at length, the wondrous twin pillars rear, erecting beauty and in strength. And now the great rite itself is consummated. Altar of mysteries manifold, the sacred circle's secret point. Thus do I sign the as of old, with kisses of my lips anoint. Open for me the secret way, the pathway of intelligence. Beyond the gates of night and day, between the bounds of time and space. Behold the mystery aright, the five true points of fellowship. Here where the lance and grail unite, and feet, and knees, and breast and lips. Arnena, Areda. You lords of the watchtowers of the east, I do thank thee for thine attendance of the rites, and ere you depart to your pleasant and lovely realms, I say hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. You lords of the watchtowers of the south, I do thank thee for thine attendance at the rites, and ere you depart to your pleasant and lovely realms, I say hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. You lords of the watchtowers of the west, I do thank thee for thine attendance at the rites, and ere you depart to your pleasant and lovely realms, I say hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. You lords of the watchtowers of the north, Boreas, thou guardian of the portals of the north, I bring before you Janet, duly consecrated, a priestess of the goddess. I thank thee for thine attendance at the rites, and ere you depart to your pleasant and lovely realms, I say hail and farewell, hail and farewell, hail and farewell. <laughs> <laughs>